Hey there, welcome back to the, well, I guess driveway. In a previous video, I built this gantry crane. All well and good, but I still need to be able to lift with it. We could take a chain hoist and attach it right here and then lift. The problem there is chain hoists take up quite a bit of space and I don't think I'd be able to lift it a whole lot. So what I really want to do is I want to put a winch up on the top side and have the cable come down in between those two beams. So what I need to do is I need to come up with a way to mount that in keeping with the disassembly ability of this. I want it to be able to just drop right in, pull right back out. So let's head into the garage and get working on it. So this is the winch I got. It's an ATV winch from Harbor Freight. It says it's 2,500 pound capacity. I don't know that I'd ever want to deadlift 2,500 pounds with this, but that's also a lot more than I intend to ever really lift with this thing. I'm also going to use a snatch block on it so that this comes down and then goes back up to an anchor point on the beam, which will have the load on this. I'm going to mount this on a piece of this plate. I was looking for a quarter inch, but I don't seem to have any laying around that's just freely available, not being used. So I've got this chunk of 3 8 What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of this and then mount that on there, and then this will stick down between the beams. This is 4 inches here on the winch. The 2x8s across the top of the beam of the gantry are 7 inch, so that's 11 total. And this is about 12 and a half long, it looks like. So down here, this will stick out the bottom roughly an inch, inch and a half. So I can actually punch a hole through here and put a ring on it, and that will be the second half or the second connection point for this cable. It'll go down to the snatch block, come back up, and reconnect to this beam. Now if you assume that the top of the beam is a couple of these, and they're separated by an inch and a half roughly, this is going to sit up on top of this. So this piece is going to slide down on the inside of one of these, and then I'll have some sort of an angle that comes out, sits on here, and another angle that sits over here. It'll make a little bit more sense once I start actually fabricating it, but that's the general idea. So this piece will just slide, if this is the top, it's going to slide right down in between here, and that way when it's holding weight it's pulling down on the top of the beam, but when it's not in use I can just grab onto the whole thing, lift it right up without any kind of connection. Obviously we're going to have to figure out all the wiring and stuff after the fact, but first let's get this thing mounted. Well, I can absolutely confirm that looks horrible, but that's why we have one of these. So imagine, if you will, that this is the top side of the beam. One side is over here, and then this is the other. This piece is just one of the spacers that keeps them at an inch and a half apart. So this one is going to slide down in. This will go here, and then they're going to get attached. Then the winch will get bolted right here. And the cable for it will drop right down in between these come out the bottom. So this is how it's going to mount. We've got a flange back here. This clamp is holding it, so it's a little hard to see, but that goes on one beam. This one goes on another beam, and there are a couple of, I don't know, those are probably three quarter inch posts that are welded between the two. I'll bolt the winch to these, and the cable's going to drop right down through this gap here. Now that we've got this coated, we're going to bolt the winch on. We use grade 8 bolts and nylocks. All 
All right, we're going to take this over and drop it onto the gantry. All right, you can see that we come right down in between here. This is how it sits. So the cable comes down here and I've got a hole here. It was pretty close to the edge, so I welded another chunk of, I don't know, that's probably three eighths bar. Welded that to it so that we can hook a, uh, whatever the hell they're called, a, uh, a ring here anyway. And I'll show you that here in just a minute as soon as I climb back down. So I put a snatch block here on the cable. Then this end is going to go back up to that ring. Okay, so we've got this hook down here as part of the snatch block and the cable comes from the winch down through it and back to a fixed point up here. The purpose of that is by doing this, the cable has to get pulled twice as far, but it only lifts half the weight. So this takes a lot of the stress off of that winch. The only thing left is to do some wiring, so I need to run wires over and down and then hook up the controls. So let's get that part done. So let's get to that. So let's get to it. Let's get to it. My original plan, I was going to make a battery box out of just some angle iron and then make some legs on it so it could straddle the leg on the gantry crane. So basically it just sat there and you could lift it up and move it around. It would allow you to take it apart real easily. Well, I went to the hardware store and bought some metal and some things to assemble it. And then I came across that. That's going to be a whole lot easier. That, with a couple of those, and it's mounted to the thing and built. So I'm going to install that, and then we will put a battery on that and then do the wiring. These studs stick up a little bit too far, they'll hit the bottom of the battery, so I'll cut them off with the zip disc so that the battery lies all the way down to the bottom of the tray. Next we need to mount this control box. These wires connect to the motor, and it's a really short, just comes from here around to there, so maybe 12 inches. So this needs to be all the way up on the top of the gantry. I've got a real easy way to mount that. So I just mounted that piece on there and this will drop right down in between the two uh, cross beams at the top. Those connect up just like that. Go over to the controller. You can see I have the hand control already plugged in. That's simply so I don't have to climb back up here when I need to use it. And then the power wires from that, they hang down here. They get about two-thirds of the way to the battery. So we've got to extend those leads and hook them to some terminals for that battery. Let's go do that now. The general plan here is I'll cut those two ends off. Then I'll extend those wires. They're going to come down. I'll butt connect them and heat shrink where I splice it up above. And I'll come down and I'll put some of these eyes on and then I'll just use the bolts to connect it into these terminals. Alright, let's test it out. Now let's lift this cab. For lifting, I just put another one of these steel 2x4s all the way through the cab. Initially I hooked a strap here that was just so that I could lift it up and hold this in place. And then once I had this held in place, I threw the chain up over it and ran it from here over to here. Let's lift this thing up. Well. It picked it up off the body bolts. Unfortunately, 
I then ran out of space. I need to tighten this up because there's probably another six or eight inches I can lift up there. But the cab is basically hanging from the gantry now. Here we go. Okay, I lifted the cab up and pushed it back. I don't know, it looks like probably eight inches or so. You can see it's going to make getting to this transmission and all of these bolts much, much easier. Next up, we're going to pull the engine and transmission, but that's it for today. Thanks for watching.